Hello, Intune friends. You might already know that autopilot that you import your hardware hash or hardware ID into your Intune. And when your Windows device, often Windows 11, boot up, it sends its hardware hash to Microsoft and asks, hey, am I managed by anyone? And if you aren't managed, you get the normal setup and click next, next. But if you are managed, you get brought into your um, tenant login. And how does that happen? Well, it downloads a little JSON file and puts in a specific location on your machine. We're going to look into that in this video, and we're going to show how you could do an autopilot. It's called sort of offline registration without first importing the hardware hash. I recommend that you always import the hardware hash, but if you are in a situation where you can't do it, you can do this turnaround. And this is a good video also to understand a bit what works behind Autopilot. So good stuff. Let's get started. So just go to our Intune portal. And here comes a pro tip. The fastest way to get there is go to aka.ms. MS is actually .ms. It's not Microsoft. It's a um, UK island, Montserrat, that own this domain that Microsoft uh, uses. They are bought aka forward slash IN for Intune. If you remember these few letters, you always remember, uh, you can always reach the portal. It's not so hard anyway. It's just uh, intune.microsoft.com. Yes, they have changed the name. It's now Intune. The old name still works but it will be gone uh, after a while. So go here, intunemicrosoft.com. What I wanted to show, if we go devices, we go windows, windows enrollment, and here we have devices. So normally we import the Harvard hash here, and I already have two machines. I have a third machine where the hardware ID, hardware hash is not imported. So let's look at that machine. So I'm going to start that one, and since the hardware hash is not imported, it's not going to bring up to my tenant. You're not going to see my GBN logo. It's going to be the normal one, like it's a home machine. I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to lose the time. I'm just going to show that this one doesn't have the hardware ID. So let's go. Okay, welcome back. So yeah, you see this is the normal Microsoft login to create one. So I don't have my um, uh, tenant. So this is not managed by me because I haven't imported a hardware hash. So while we are here, let's create this JSON file I spoke about in, in the introduction. That's the one who's going to help us. So I'm going to do Shift F10, a pro tip also, to get the command line. And you could have created this JSON file on any machine. I'm going to do it on this machine. You don't have to do it on the machine that you're going to create. So we're going to need a PowerShell. So let's run the PowerShell. And I'm going to do ISE. You follow my video, know that I like Windows PowerShell ISE. And it actually remembers some stuff that I run. It's actually exactly those commands we're going to run. But, okay, so here we can do a lot of commands and I'm gonna steal this from a web page. I'm gonna put the link in the description of this video. So here it's called the Windows Autopilot for existing devices. If you're running Configuration Manager, they even explain here all the steps where you could push this uh, JSON file to your Configuration Manager SCCM devices and put the collection and all that. But we we don't do that here now. Okay, so I'll just take copy here. And I go back to my device. And I'm gonna use the clipboard so it will type it for me. No typos. See if this works. It's using the old one. Should still work. Let's see. So what does it do? First, it's installed NuGet. That's to get files on the internet. Then Azure AED, then Graph for Intune, and then Autopilot. Then it actually imports those modules. So it's doing all that now. Okay, it's done. 
Let's see if the next uh, step works as well. So next step is going to be connect to MS Graph. So it's our tenant. So I'll run this one down here. Actually, I can type this one. Don't have to be that lazy. So here it's very important that I connect I'll, to my tenant. Okay, so now we're connected. Now we should be able to run the, the next part of the commands. So now we're connected. It's actually going to be get autopilot profile. That's the JSON file. Well, it is uh, the data and we're going to uh, convert it to a JSON file. And JSON stands for JavaScript object notation. So I'm actually copy this one. And let's... Uh, type clipboard text and hit enter. So this is how my uh, JSON file will look like. We haven't saved it yet. We can just speak a bit about uh, this item. See if I can zoom in uh, maybe twice. So this is what the JSON file is made up of. And we're gonna copy that the JSON file to a folder on the machine. It's under C Windows Provisioning Autopilot, where it looks for. So if we start on the first one, cloud domain uh, join method, zero means Azure AD join, the best join. If it was a one here, it would be hybrid join. That means you would have uh, your own um, probably local Active Directory domain and join there. And that's not so cloud friendly unless you use a lot of VPN. Then cloud assignment device name, we know that this device is going to be named GBN dash and then the serial number. Then the timeout, it's default. Cloud forced enrollment, that it has to uh, join the domain, yes please. Version, it, I always seen 2049, I've seen on the internet different uh, explanation. One guy said it's related to the minimum Windows version, but Microsoft themselves just say that this is the version number. Not sure why it's always this, maybe it will change in the future. Cloud assignment tenant, this is the tenant that we are assigned to, so that should be my tenant. We can just remember the fir uh, three first one, D, hopefully a zero or maybe an O. Now it looks to be zero, D08. Let's see if mine is D08. Go to um, uh, Azure Active Directory Admin Center. Let's go to Azure Active Directory. It was D08. Yep, this one match. So it's a one-to-one -one matching. I can maybe put it uh, uh, closer to each other. Wrong window. This one. If I just move this one temporary, you see it's a one-to-one -one, uh, matching here. Okay, then uh, autopilot update disabled. Uh, well, it's uh, a negative, so it is uh, enabled. Then this uh, ZTD, each time you see ZTD, that stands for uh, zero touch deployment, meaning that it's automated. And here's a unique ID, which is needed. I can't map that to anything. Uh, comment file, profile GPM deployment profile default. That name, if I go to Intune, I can map that. So that should be, if I go again, well, I'm nearly there actually. Well, I start from the beginning if you want to follow. So device in your devices, Windows, Windows enrollment, and because I'm not maximized, it tried to put everything <laughs> in one line. It should be the deployment profile. And here is the name of that one. So the name that we saw should be this name, GBM deployment profile. Let's see if we can put them uh, side by side again. Uh, or I just put it down here. So, no, I thought that would work. Let me put them side by side uh, this way. I'm really good at this. So it seems to add a profile and then it takes GBN deployment profile default. Uh, 
what else do we have? Cloud assignment server data, zero touch config. There comes the ST, um, well, ST deployment here, zero touch config, I guess ZTC. Uh, just that we use the UPN, that we force enrollment. It's actually rephrasing a bit of stuff we already have, which tenant it is. So here we have cloud assigned uh, config. This one is pretty funny. This one maps some of our options. Microsoft haven't documented all these. They have documented up to 31. And here's 1310. So it's a bit what we already see here on the side. So for example, uh, well, it's difficult to see them at the same time. I'll show only this one. A few of these, this for example is maybe value one, another one is two, another one is four, and eight, and 16, and those are the ones who are described in the Microsoft document. And all those value add up to which config you have. So for probably one of my values are 1024. And another one is 512. Well, that would go over here, so it's probably not that. So it's probably 256. So it, the logic is, if I do it a bit easier, let me use uh, this part here. Let's say, no, now it's not going to be related to Intune. I'm just making this up as I go now. Let's say one means that you're a man. Two means you're a woman. Let's say four means that you... Uh, um, are tall <laughs> and uh, eight means that you are short. So if someone have a tall woman would be the value of six. A short man would be the value of nine. Why six? Because woman two and tall is six. Why a short man would be nine? Because the value of not one and eight. The same logic is built of this value. So it's incremental. So probably if I continue to beat this horse, uh, 32, 64, 128, uh, 256, 512, 10. So probably uh, the values that I have uh, checked on my deployment profile, one have 10, 24, then it can't have this, so maybe it's 256, then it can't be this, and then Microsoft have a value for each of these. Okay, I brought that one a bit too long, sorry for that, but just to explain this value. Then the tenant domain, well, that's mine, uh, related to um, this uh, tenant ID. And uh, language, OS default, that comes also from here. So, uh, there, operating system default language. If I had changed that, then it would show up something else. And here is the name, GBN Serial. Okay, long for seeing. So now we have seen this convert, but we haven't saved it to file. Let's do that. And we go back again to the documentation here. Yep, here is uh, what I tried to explain earlier, that one will skip uh, Cortana opt-in but they only show up to 16. So if you enable all these, you will only get the value of 31. And I have 1,310. So there are a lot more values here that the Microsoft haven't documented because they have probably added more and more values. And here was the domain method, all what we have went through, this um, zero touch deployment, correlation ID. So now we want to create the JSON file. I don't want to create it on the desktop but I'm gonna steal this code and we're just gonna modify it um, slightly. So we go back here. I'm gonna let uh, the computer type this one. And then I'm just gonna do my small changes. Maximize this window. Okay, so first it's gonna to connect to gra graph, which we already done. So actually, I think I skipped that one. I'll just put the comment. Oh, not there on the connect. Then we want to get the auto uh, pilot uh, profile. We save it in this variable. And then we go through for each object because you can multiple profile. I have only one. And then we're going to create a new item 
in which directory? Well, here it's put in the desktop. Um, I don't mind putting it on the root of C. I will have to do the same here. It should just create one. So we could have done this one a lot shorter. And very important is that it's encoded in ASCII. So if you create, if you copy this file to Notepad++ and save it as UTF-8 or another encoding, then it's not going to work. And the name must be autopilot configuration file. It must be this. It you can I've seen a few who by me for some reason think autopilot has a capital P. It doesn't, but that actually worked. Microsoft uh, Windows is not so sensitive on um, uppercase or lowercase, but it has to be this name. I mean, when we export it, it can be any name and then we rename it, but when we use it. Let's see if this works. Might get an error. We fix it then. Uh, I said we didn't want this one. Let's run this and see if it works. We did create one on the root of C. Let's, if I go CD backslash and I put notepad exe. No, I have to go into the folder again. And it was called uh, profile something. Nope. Program data, it was not called that. Let's do an L. Uh, yeah, yeah, this works. GBN. Okay, so let's do CD GBN. So if we have our file here, if I just type notepad.exe, I start to type auto and then put tab to auto complete and then open it. Then we see the same as we had before. So this is our file. There's a new version of uh, I'm not going to install on this one. So we have this file. I go back to Explorer because now comes next step. We're going to copy this one to the location where Windows, when booting up, look for this file. So this file, again, get downloaded if you have imported the hardware hash, which we have not done in this. That's the whole point. I'm going to copy this one and go to the location. So the location is, we can go there slowly. Let's start with Windows. Under Windows, we have a folder called Provisioning. Here, Provisioning. Under Provisioning, we have Autopilot. Yeah, let's go in there. If we paste this file here, which we're going to do, now we have simulated that the hardware hash is actually there. So this is what the Windows doesn't download. So it's going to read this file during the setup and then go to my tenant. So we are actually done here. So now we should, uh, I'm going to close this one. Or actually we can stay here. Why, why, we don't, why don't we do a shutdown? Uh, forward slash R for restart the time. Let's give it two seconds and uh, let's restart. You're about to be signed out. Thank you. And I will for fast forward the video here for you. And uh, look what happened here. We have not imported the hardware hash. It's still the two ones that I had uh, uh, before, so nothing changed there. Windows Enrollment, Devices, there's not the third one, it has not magically been updated here. So if we reset this machine and delete that file, uh, then it will not work. So that's how you offline autopilot a machine. You still have the same restrictions do, like uh, for example, if we go devices and then look uh, enrollment device platform restriction, you don't bypass that. So if we go windows restriction, for example, and take a look, you still, I have put here, you still must be windows 11. You can't bypass this and with the Windows 10, this will still hit later and fail. So it just bypassed that you don't have to import the hardware hash, which you should be doing anyway. So now I could just log in with the user and continue the autopilot. So now a user could just uh, enter in their credentials and off you go with your uh, autopilot. I'm not going to finish this one in the video. I have enough machines. Thank you very much for looking at this video. See you in another one.